What about the latest of man's weapons of destruction? 70 years ago, in the morning of July 16, 1945, the United States conducted its first atomic bomb test. Codenamed Trinity, the plutonium bomb test took place at a U.S. Air Force base in the state of New Mexico. The head of the project, Robert Oppenheimer, later described the scene as the bomb detonated into a fireball 12,000 meters high. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. A top U.S. general, Leslie Groves, wrote that the test was, quote, successful beyond the most optimistic expectations of anyone. It was the result of years of work. At the beginning of World War II, in 1939, the United States began the Manhattan Project. The purpose was to become the world leader in atomic weapons. We are standing in front of the first atomic bomber, the Enola Gay. Just a month after the successful Trinity test, the United States dropped an atomic bomb over the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Within several kilometers of the drop site, virtually everything was destroyed or damaged. The pilot of the plane which dropped the bomb, Paul Tibbetts. The sight that greeted our eyes was quite uh, beyond what we had expected because we saw this cloud of boiling dust and debris below us with this tremendous mushroom on top. Uh, beneath that was hidden the ruins of the city of Hiroshima. More than 70,000 people died instantly. At least another 100,000 are estimated to have died from radiation poisoning in the following years. Just a few days later, the United States dropped a second bomb on the city of Nagasaki. The war would soon end. Over the years that followed, the Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and China would be among the nations which tested atomic bombs. China's People's Daily published this article in October of 1964, confirming the country's first successful test. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the man who led the U.S. atomic bomb project, later expressed regret. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. So 70 years on from the first atomic bomb test here in the United States, it's amazing to think of how much the world has changed or maybe how much it hasn't. CCTV Sean Calos is joining us now, and Sean is here to talk about atomic bomb programs. They are still very much alive, including right here in the United exactly. States. Exactly. It is indeed seven decades ago when that first nuclear test was conducted, and almost immediately scientists who worked for years to perfect the bomb claimed they were witness to the end of the world. What you may not know is that today at the site, the Los Alamos National Laboratory, work is still going on to upgrade thousands of U.S. nuclear weapons. It could be any small town carved out of the rough terrain in the southwestern United States. But Los Alamos has its place in history secure. It all started here. As World War II raged, the U.S. government lured scientist Robert Oppenheim and legions of other brilliant scientists to build the world's first nuclear bomb. Folksy home movies helped document work on the effort that was codenamed the Manhattan Project. This is what Los Alamos looked like back then. An important landmark right in the middle of everything is Ashley Pond. This is Ashley Pond today. Seventy years after ushering in the atomic age, Los Alamos and nuclear weapons remain intimately intertwined. Instead of the Manhattan Project, today it's the Los Alamos National Lab, a sprawling facility that employs 9,000 people, not terribly far from here. What frustrates critics is that facility remains shrouded in secrecy. They're in the fear marketing business. They need a Cold War. They need arms, if not, if they're not arms racing with someone else, they need, uh, they need to arms race with themselves. This thing right here, and you can detonate a bomb 
in a container. Greg Mello heads a watchdog organization called the Los Alamos Study Group. I can't tell what I'm seeing here. In the name of national security, what goes on at Los Alamos National Lab, or LANL, is top secret. I don't see I got this. it blacked out. The LANL budget is close to $2 billion a year, and about three quarters of that money is spent on nuclear weapons research. In an era that is supposed to be characterized by dismantling nuclear weapons, Mello says, think again. All told, the United States has between seven and 8,000 nuclear weapons, including those that are slated for disarmament. In the arsenal, so-called, let's say 4,600, 4,500. Far more than any other nation. China, uh, on the order of, I should know this, uh, but I would say, 300, um, of which about 25 could reach the United States. You can't see the Los Alamos National Lab from the town, and that is by design. And you can't miss the effect it has on this community. 40% of the land in the city is owned by LANL, and the lab funds a full 80% of the county's operating budget. They are the single largest landowner in the entire county. Despite the fact LANL scientists work with high-level radioactive materials, and much of that waste is still stored on site, you won't find a chorus of nuclear critics. The majority of the residents understand the mission of the lab and uh, support it because they've chosen to work for it. Uh, so we don't have a lot of um, what you might anticipate with detractors for the lab in our, our local community. Within this top secret site, the mission includes designing new nuclear weapons, but analysts say an overwhelming majority of LANL's $2 billion budget has scientists researching how the aging U.S. arsenal would perform if it was forced into use. A colossal waste of money and resources, according to Mello and other critics. Weapons people who used to be running the lab agree with us. The lab is twice as big as it needs to be. And so we'd like it to be half as big as it is. In the interest of our national defense, LANL management resists efforts to cut spending and can always rely on two crucial words, national security. More than seven years after this, another enduring legacy of Los Alamos remains secrecy. And Sean, still here in our uh, Washington broadcast center, the Los Alamos facility is still very much alive. And what's interesting, I think, for some people is the safe havens from the Cold War still exist as well. There are a lot of relics uh, all around uh, the United States. And we actually had a chance to go to one that was shrouded in secrecy for uh, decades uh, inside the mountain, inside the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia. There you get a look at it uh, pre-dawn, but that is it in all its splendor. Uh, it's known as a resort for the kings. But here is what was hidden for such a long time until it was outed by a reporter for the Washington Post. There you're seeing a 50-ton blast door uh, actually be shut. There was a nuclear facility uh, underground, a facility rather, for Congress to uh, go to in case of a nuclear attack. It would hold 1,100 people. There you see some of the dorms. It had a pharmacy, a medical center, enough for all of Congress and uh, their chief aides. And the goal, Mike, was to make sure that if there was the unspeakable, the unthinkable, that the branches of the U.S. military, or that the U.S. would continue executive justice and uh, uh, the uh, lawmakers as well. And it's so interesting, you look at these pictures from the past and still very present today. Uh, it's amazing how far we've come and yet how far we haven't come and in some And people respects. now pay to take that tour inside the uh, mountain in the Greenbrier. Fascinating. Bar. Thanks so much, Sean.